Here we go again. I'm going to do a little bit more of the resurfacing of these fantastic old George Cleverly. It's probably taken a couple of hours to cut this off here. I um, did that yesterday and I've done a little bit more today. And I'm just now sort of going to work on the vamp area. But it's very sharp paper. That's about 40 grit. And you cannot go anywhere near the... Well, I say anywhere near. You can go up to the uh, stitching, but you definitely can't go over it. Um, it's just a tedious process. It's not a job I enjoy, if I'm honest with you. I, I find it bloody hard work. And I find it very, very tedious. And it's actually very rough on my fingers. My, my, I haven't got the... You know, I've got quite soft hands and um, the paper cuts my fingers so it isn't very nice but it's one of those things that um, I can steal myself to and you know, you know I, can, I can perhaps face an hour at, at most then I put it down and uh, come back to it the next day but that bit in the middle is cut reasonably well there's no rough skin there there's no creasing left but it's far too rough you couldn't use that as a finish um, but of course I've got to do the rest of the shoe and um, this is extremely scratchy uh, I'll do the whole shoe then I'll come back to it with finer papers I'll come back to this I think I'll redo the whole shoe with 120 grit um, followed by 240 grit something of that nature and finally finish with 400 grit before re-dyeing it it's an agonisingly slow process but there really is no other way around once a, once a skin has got to this, this sort of degraded state where it's it's dried out so much that the surface is swollen and cracked no amount of moisturising and conditioning and polishing or whatever is going to have any effect you've got absolutely no choice but to cut it away and cutting it away like I'm doing here it's just a tedious tedious task really tedious I do this quite a lot you know with a lot of shoes but honestly truly it's not a task I enjoy it's just something I tolerate on extremely special pairs. Pairs that, are, you know, are obviously very special, like these made in 69 by George Cleverly. They were actually made for Prince Rupert Lowenstein, the uh, financial manager of the Rolling Stones. He looks after the Stones' money for years and years and years, literally from the mid-60s right up until not long before his death, in fact. Um, quite a character in his own right, even without the Stones' connection. And uh, he had a vast collection of George Cleverly shoes, most of which I own now. It was Charlie Watts, the uh, Rolling Stones drummer, who introduced him to George Cleverly. And, uh, you know, the Prince obviously adored Cleverly shoes. And he had, he had an awful lot, but my goodness me, did he wear them. And he wore them until they became really quite rough and degraded like this, but he still carried on wearing them. Most of them have got a taupey soul. And below, below that sole, it's got its original, original welting. Um, so these are completely original apart from that. But, you know, that, he probably had that replaced ten times over the, over the life of these shoes. So, um, yeah, most of his shoes have got the original soles and welting. But I'm no fan of topies. I don't particularly like them. But they do, they do protect the skins and allow shoes to remain original. These would have been binned years ago if they'd have had sole after sole. So... Um, but yeah, honestly, I can't stress enough, this is a, a time-consuming, tedious task. It is not, I don't know, it has to be done, I accept it, but it's, I just don't enjoy it. I did the last shoe um, about a year ago, and I've just not been able to find the enthusiasm or the motivation to, despite the pair of shoes being truly fantastic, and I really do want to get them on my feet. I've just been struggling to find the motivation to come back to finish this one, but... I'm determined to keep my toe down on this now and really get the bloody thing finished once and for all. Get them, get them re-dyed, get them polished to a mirror finish and start wearing them. Because even to get to this grotty looking stage, this shoe's had tens of hours of restoration. Most of the stitching's been repaired by hand. The shape was completely stretched, appallingly stretched. Um, totally out of shape. They were, they'd lost all of the cleverly sort of the silhouette that you get on a on a classic bespoke shoe, which I've managed to restore. Because I've got the original tree inside it, which is bespoke tree. Of course, that tree hadn't changed shape. I was able to re reshape and resize the shoe and reduce the, the stretching, take it back to its original. But without those trees, I'd have struggled to return the original silhouette. They're a slight little bit big for me, but um, I'll make an insole um, to go inside them. Um, I'll, I'll make a cork insole about three or four millimetres out of cork 
and I'll cover that in thin thin leather so um, that will allow them to fit me a, whoop, dropping them that will allow them to fit me a bit better but, uh, yeah it would be possible to reduce the size a bit more um, but I would I would have to use other trees than the um, the original the original bespokes which came in these shoes so being as I can make them fit me a bit better I can take up the slack so to speak with um, with a thick cork insole and they'll, they'll fit me okay they'll certainly look fantastic and I'll certainly wear them despite, despite the great age they're I was bought it born in when was I but I was born in 68 these were made in 69 so we we're a similar age but, uh, there we go, there we go. <sighs> just people walking by wondering what I'm doing as usual I'm working in the street I'm just finding it easier at the moment because the microphone's not working properly on the camera. I'm just finding it easier to work in the street, but it attracts a lot of attention, unwanted attention. People stand there shouting and swearing, but those people walk past, they disturb me. It throws me off my track slightly, but they weren't abusive to me, which is perfectly fine, I'm afraid. One or two of these films I've had to scrap, you know, people abusing me and, yeah, it is what it is. People will be people and they have strange manners. It's bizarre. I think, you know, the COVID lockdowns made people impatient and aggressive. And uh, it is what it is. But as you can see me working away in circles on this, avoiding like the plague, the stitches. If I go over those stitches, I'll lose the stitches. Whoops, I did go over it there, but thankfully I didn't press on. <laughs> um, but you can lose the stitching very, very quickly if you go over the stitching. Actually, it's not, you can, you will you definitely will lose the stitching within a matter of three or four rubs of the paper you'll lose the stitching so as you can see me working away here I don't know how many minutes I've kept this camera rolling and running whilst I've been chattering away but I've literally done a tiny little bit and it still needs a huge amount more and this is just one cut one it will need at least four cuts of different papers before I'll come to dyeing the shoe and trying to come about re-moisturizing the skins there we go. It's a tedious task. I'm not going to go on anymore, but you get the idea. Um, if I bring it close to the surface of the camera, you can see it looks slightly matte and even a little bit like buckskin underneath, which it does. But by the time that's been sort of had all of the differing grades of paper, and what does really make the difference is putting in the um, the, 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 the moisturising cream, the coloured cream, and that sinks in and it plumps the surface. Then you can rub a bit of friction on the surface and that makes it smooth. Um, so it takes it from this buckskin nap type thing to a very shiny, shiny surface before polishing. These, despite their horrendous sort of grotty, desperately cracked surface, you know, these will come up literally like mirror finish, gloss finish. I'm looking forward to you seeing them to see what's, what's available, what, not what's available, what's possible. But my goodness me, does it take patience? <laughs>